Independent scientists were beginning to see indications that consuming genetically engineered foods could have kidney and liver damage. Uh, we're seeing possible reproductive issues in laboratory animals. These are peer-reviewed science. Now we're beginning to see problems that could come from them. Wheat was the, the holy grail for companies like Monsanto. If they could have had all the wheat in the United States be genetically engineered, that was really the holy grail. Monsanto had spent 10 years developing the genetic modified wheat. The wheat farmers decided we did not want them to release a genetically modified wheat. We said, no, we're not doing that. We don't have to take the chance to fool with the genetic modified plants. And we said, no, we don't want it, and now we've got it. We thought this had been put to bed. Uh, we thought those wheat seeds had been destroyed. Apparently not. The Department of Agriculture have told us, don't worry, we can keep these seed trials confined. And time and time again, they have failed to do so, and they have escaped. Once you take that stuff out of the laboratory, there's a thousand things that can go wrong that lets that seed get away. As far as a duck can fly, they eat seed and they excrete that seed and that seed grows in a place where it wasn't intended. You can't pull it back. You can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. International wheat markets shut down for months. That cost farmers hundreds of millions of dollars. When USDA opened an investigation. They've never been able to discover how the genetically engineered wheat got in the farmer's field. We're fooling with Mother Nature in a way that, quite frankly, may end up not being near as rosy of a panacea as these seed companies want to point out. If our wheat is contaminated, I'm out of business. In 1998, we were just beginning a harvest in canola in, in the middle of August. My neighbor had grown GMO canola, and our fields were contaminated. And the bus station phoned up, and I thought, that's unusual. And they said, there's a parcel here for you. Later on that evening, open it. Here's a lawsuit from Monsanto. And I, I didn't think much of it. Oh, what's this patent infringement? I didn't even know what that was. Our family lawyer looked at me and said, Chrissy, I think you're in trouble. I said, what for? Well, he said, they're charging you that you have their GMO seeds. And I said, what are GMO seeds? The judge stated that it does not matter how you're contaminated. You violate the patent, and you no longer own your seeds. That right should never be taken away from a farmer. You take a seed that has been there for thousands of years and put a patent on it and say you own it. Basically, it's robbery. To me, that's a really a violation of human rights. Henry Kissinger said, if you want to control a country, control the oil. If you want to control a people, control the food. Van der Shiva says, if you want to control the food, control the seed. When seed started to become a patented property sold by corporations, you destroy seed freedom. When a company as powerful as Monsanto enters a country, it starts to control that country's decision making. Monsanto started to buy up Indian seed companies. 60 Indian seed companies can only sell Monsanto seeds. The companies will take video vans into the villages. They had every Indian epic 
and they would very cleverly sell the seeds. So Hanuman is carrying white gold, the seeds of Monsanto. So when Hanuman comes as a salesman of Monsanto, they believe in them. So that was the first strand through which they took over. Then they also told the farmer, why are you using these old seeds? Sell them to us. A farmer has always had seed. And a farmer would say, oh, they're giving me some money for the seed. I'll just get it from my neighbor tomorrow. Not realizing the neighbor has also been approached in the same way, and the next village, and the next village. In one season, this thing they call seed replacement has destroyed the entire native seed supply. You have a seed dictatorship established. Then the farmer can't get out. Farmers will be forced to come back to buy seed every year. We could have very, very large-scale famine, but unlike all famines of the past, no resurrection. Because every famine of the past, seed was always there. This time's famine will be based on a seed famine. What this free trade system has given us is instead of seed being off the farmers, by the farmers, for the farmers and all citizens, it is now seed for the corporations, by the corporations, of the corporations. NAFTA will create the world's largest trade zone and create 200,000 jobs in this country. When NAFTA was introduced between the United States and Mexico, all of a sudden, the U.S. was selling subsidized corn into Mexico that was below the cost of production in Mexico, forcing a couple of million farmers off their land. We planted the seeds of that migration. A lot of that corn is contaminated with transgenics. We are destroying the basis of the world's agriculture. 